Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we're gonna transform the default cube into this cute Simpsons living room. And I really hope you will enjoy this one and if you do, please leave a like, give that thumbs up, it will really help me. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more like this in the future, please consider hitting that subscribe and additionally bell button if you want to get notified when I release something new. And if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender, and you want to become a 3D illustrator, go and check out my courses that are carefully designed to teach you beginner and intermediate skills in quickest and most effective way. For example, with the new Ultimate 3D bundle, you can go from simple cubic designs all the way to full character illustration in a matter of weeks. So if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. Now let's jump right into empty blender file and first of all I will select the camera and hold shift and select the light as well, press X and delete, we won't need them. And I scale the UI up a little bit so you can see things a little bit better in these tutorials, so I hope this will help. And now let's select the default cube, let's tab into the edit mode and first of all I will press S and then 4 to scale this 4 times, hit enter to confirm. Let me zoom out a little bit and press G then Z and move this up 4 meters, so let's press 4 and confirm. So we have this sitting down on the origin point and then I will hit 3 for face select. Select these front faces by holding shift and press X and delete faces. So this will be the base for our room, now let's press A and Alt E for extrude menu and let's choose extrude faces on normals. And now I will enter some key commands. So first of all, I will press S for some even scaling and now 0.5 for size and hit minus to go to the opposite direction and hit enter to confirm. And now just to be safe, I will hit A to select all and shift N to recalculate normals. Now hit 2 for edge select, select this edge right here and hold shift S and snap cursor to select it. Now tab out and let's press shift A and let's add a plane. Now I'll scale this up a little bit, so tab in, press S to scale, something like this. And let's press E to extrude and this will be like a little archway there. Um, so something like this, maybe a little bit wider. We'll see how that works. And now let's select this edge right here, hold shift, select the other one and let's press ctrl B to bevel this and I will increase the segments with the mouse wheel and bring these on the top close together. Now let's go for X-ray view and press one for vertex select. Now let's select these two, press M and merge at center and here as well, M and merge at center. Now again, just to be safe, let's press A to select all and shift N to recalculate normals. Now tab out. And for the next operation, you will need a bool tool add-on activated. Um, you will see the list of add-on I'm using in the description. Just go into the edit preferences add-ons and you can search for them and activate. No need to download, they're all default Blender add-ons. So let me disable the X-ray view and hold shift to select the room. It should be highlighted yellow and now control minus with the bool tool add-on active and you should have this cut right here. Now. This is now flat shaded, you can see these segments right here. So let's right click and shade this smooth. And now let's fix the shading, so let's go to the object data properties, normals and let's check auto smooth like that. And now let's select this cutout right here and right click shade smooth as well. Okay, so that's the archway and with this boolean object selected, let's press G then X and move it to the side a little bit, just like this. Okay, so that's the base for our room, now let's select the room tab in and I will go for face select by pressing 3, select this face and let's press shift D to duplicate and right click to release in place and I will press P for separation menu and choose selection that will separate it into a new object right here so we can now tab out and select this new object and I'm gonna create um, some floor here so let's tab in and first of all I will do some slicing so let's press ctrl R and let's create the slice right here and increase the number of cuts with the mouse wheel and I'm looking for something like seven cuts right here and confirm and right click to release in place and you can see this kind of matches the width of the archway here if it doesn't don't worry about it you can um, adjust this later because that will be very useful to make the floor go this way and now I will go for face select select all of these faces by holding shift and press X and delete 
And now let's go back to the edge select by pressing 2, select this edge right here and I'll press V to rip this apart um, and right click to release in place. So basically there are these overlapping vertices right now, um, which is okay because now we can cut these separately. So I'll press Ctrl R and create a cut right here, right click to release and one more here, release and two more on either side and now I will select this one here and press Ctrl X to dissolve it. So we have this plank pattern going on. And now we'll rip out um, these edges as well. So let's select one of them, V and then right click to release here as well. Let's press V, right click and here. And now this will need a little bit of precision. So let's press A to select all and let's go to the snapping options and let's choose vertex snapping. And now let's press Shift D and X to move this on X axis right here. And now GX to move this again and hold control to snap it right here on this vertex. And now I'll just repeat this once again. So let's press Shift D, X, move it to the side and GX and hold control to snap it here. And now I only need this strip right here. So let's go for face select, press three and by holding shift we can select these, press shift D, X and move it to the side and now GX and hold control to snap it. And you might wonder why I'm not using the array modifier but duplicating this tediously like that. And that's because I like this width and we only have seven strips so we will need to add one manually anyway. And then there's this place right here which I want to fix. So let's go for edge select again by pressing two, select these three edges and let's press G then Y and snap it right here. So even after using a ray modifier, you would need to go back, you know, apply the modifier and do this thing. So I might as well duplicate it manually. Okay, now I will press A to select all and E to extrude it like that. And just to be safe again, press A to select all and shift N to recalculate normals. Now let's tab out and you might see something like this. That's a little bit messy. And that's because this object was separated from the original room which had boolean modifier on it already. So the same boolean modifier got transferred on this object. So just hit the X in the modifiers panel and it will get removed. And you can't see these cuts yet, um, but now we will add a bell modifier here. And now you can see why we separated these edges from one another. Um, this is now easy to make planks like that. And now let's add some segments. I will add three segments here and adjust the amount tiny bit just like that and let's go to the shading options and enable harden normals and now in the object data properties we already have auto smooth on so let's just increase 280 degrees and we have some nice planks um, here it doesn't fit so well so now it's time to refine let's select the boolean object here press g then x and move it to the side like this if you didn't eyeball this correctly um, don't worry you can always use s to scale it and match your planks there. Um, there should be plenty of space on top. And speaking of plenty of space, I want to go into the edit mode right now and enable X-ray modifier, select these edges on top, press G then Z and move them up so it's a little bit higher. Okay, so um, that's the basic room and now let's create some couch. So I will shift right click here to move the cursor. Let's press shift A and let's add a plane. Now I will tap into the edit mode and scale this up a little bit something like this should be enough and now s then y to scale on y axis as well now tab out and let's press g then y and move it to the side i want to leave a space um like this here now tab back in and we'll do some more slicing here so first of all let's press ctrl r and create a cut in the middle right click to release and let's just select this edge press x and delete vertices we only need one half here because i will go into the modifiers tab and let's add a mirror modifier and let's go for y axis here and disable x and now let's press ctrl r and create a cut here in the back now let's go for face select by pressing 3 select this face and let's press p and separate the selection again that will create a new object for you uh, but don't tap out just yet just press ctrl r and create a new cut here on the original plane just like that and now again i'll press 3 for face select select this face and p and separate selection so now we have all the geometry we need for the sofa so let's press a to select all Press E to extrude. That will be the first part. Now tab out and select these separated objects, for example the back, and tab into the edit mode. Press A to select all and E to extrude. 
like this. Now I'll go for edge select by pressing 2, select this edge, control B, and create the radius like that. Now tab out and let's select this part here. Tab into the edit mode, A to select all and E to extrude up here. Now let's select these edges on sides by holding shift and let's press control B to bevel and we don't need so many segments. So again, I will reduce this with the mouse wheel just like that. And now let's select this one in the middle, tab into the edit mode and I'll press shift D to duplicate this, right click to release and again P enter to separate. Now tab out and select the new object. You will see it in the outline view as well. And now just tab in, press A to select all and extrude some cushions and we can do some adjustments now. So let's go for face select by pressing three, select this face in the front, G then X and move it to the front a little bit. And now let's do the same here. Okay, and now we'll reuse the bevel modifier here. So let's select these three objects. I will leave the bottom one as is and shift click the floor. And now let's hit this small arrow here and copy to select it. And now with the control, I will drag a selection here and deselect the floor. And by holding shift, I will select this object right here. So we have these three selected. And we are now able to edit this bevel modifier by holding alt for all three objects at once. So let's make this bevel a little bit stronger like that. And now let's go to the object data properties by holding alt click auto smooth and by holding alt again, we'll increase this to 180 degrees, right click and shade smooth. So you should have something like this here. And here in the middle, um, I want these separated. So let's go into the edit mode and let's toggle X-ray, select this face right here, press G then Y and move it slightly to the side like this. And you will see it will get separated. And now one last adjustment, I want to select this object right here, select the front face, press G, then X and move it slightly back like this. And now let's select all of these with the back cushion as last and press Ctrl P and parent to object. So we are able to manipulate this um, as one object. So that's the couch basically. And now let's create some carpet. So shift right click the cursor right here. Let's press shift A and let's add a plane. And now I will tap into the edit mode, scale this up tiny bit and scale on Y axis. So S then Y and create a shape. And now let's go for vertex select by pressing one and we can press Ctrl Shift B to create a vertex bevel and increase the number of cuts with the mouse wheel again a little bit and create a shape like that. And now let's select everything by pressing A and let's do a small inset. So press I and do a very small inset like this and then press S to scale this further down like this and we'll repeat this process several times. So I and then S and one more in the middle. So I again and then S to scale. Okay, something like this. Let's zoom in a little bit and now I'll press two for edge select, alt click this loop um, to select it and press V and again we are able to rip this apart. Now let's alt click this one here and again we'll press V. And for some reason when you have a face like this, this is no longer a loop so the V won't work here. But we can simply press P then enter to separate this into a new object, tab out and then with both of those objects selected, just press Ctrl J to join it back and this will be separated. So let's press A to select all and extrude like this. And again, A and Shift N, tab out and Shift click the floor, go to the modifiers tab and let's copy to select it. So we now have the same bevel modifier here. Let's select the carpet and we can adjust the amount of the beveling here go into the object data properties, enable auto smooth, go to 180 degrees, right click and shade smooth. So we have now um, some stylized carpet here and we can move it closer to the sofa maybe and make it a little bit larger. Okay. And maybe the bell modifier can be a little bit more pronounced like this. Okay. And now in the corner, I want to have a lamp here. So shift right click there, press shift A and let's add a circle and I will reduce this to 24 segments. That should be enough. Tap into the edit mode and let's scale this down a tiny bit like that. And now press E then Z to extrude this up. Press F to fill and let's press I to inset like this. And now press G then Z and move it up slightly and we'll press Ctrl B to bevel this further. Reduce the number of cuts with the mouse wheel. I just want two cuts here. 
and you can hold shift for some smaller increments and now press 3, select the face in the middle and scale it down and extrude, this can be quite high. Now hold shift S and snap cursor to select it, now tab out and let's press shift A and we'll add another circle. Now I will reduce this even further to 12 segments, that should be enough. Tap into the edit mode and scale it down like this, tab out and right click and we'll convert to curve. And now in the curve settings in the geometry section we will just increase the depth to create a ring like this, right click and shade smooth. Um, I don't want to do anything more here so let's press shift A and let's add another object and that will be a round cube. Um, if you don't have this option here again check out the add-ons list in the description just go into the edit preferences add-on section and in this case search for extra objects add-on and you should see all of these options here and let's choose round cube and let's use the quad sphere preset and let's reduce the divisions to four should be enough tap into the edit mode and scale it down like this tab out and press g then z to move it up right click and shade smooth okay and we left this flat shaded so let's go back um, to the stand and tap into the edit mode first of all i will go for edge select by pressing 2 and alt click this loop press ctrl b to bevel this and now just tab out, right click and shade smooth and to fix the shading I will just use the auto smooth in this case, I won't use the bevel modifier here. Now let's select the round cube here, shift S and cursor to select it and now let's look from the side by pressing 3 on a numpad and let's press shift A and let's add a single vert and again this is part of the extra objects add-on so let's add that single vert and let's hit 1 for vertex select and let's press E to extrude this vertex and make sure you are in the vertex select mode um, otherwise this extrusion won't work for you and now let's extrude a shape like this okay tab out and again we'll right click convert to curve um, I find this um, the most efficient way how to create curves and now let's increase the depth again in the geometry section and we'll reduce the resolution to 2 because right now I will just press ctrl 1 in the viewport to add subdivision modifier you can see it's added here right click and shade smooth okay now tab in select this control point and hold shift s and a snap cursor to select it now tab out and let's press shift a and another circle and you will start to see these patterns that I do here and I want to increase the number of vertices to 24 in this case tab into the edit mode and scale this down like that, tab out and let's press shift D to duplicate this, right click to release in place, we have now two of them and with the first we'll right click convert to curve and again we'll add some geometry, right now we don't need any subdivision here so let's just right click and shade this smooth and then underneath we have the other one that we created right here, we can tab into the edit mode, press A to select all if you don't see what you're doing you can enable x-ray and let's press E then X and extrude it like this that will be the lampshade and S to scale. Now with all of these selected just go to select and checker deselect and let's press S to scale this down like that. Tab out, we'll disable the x-ray view and let's press ctrl 2 for adding the subdivision modifier right click shade smooth and we have some lamp maybe this is a little bit too large so let's refine this first of all i will parent the shade to this ring right here press ctrl p and parent to object so this way we are able to scale them both at once and now i will parent this one to this object so ctrl p and choose object and now you are able to scale all of this at once and let's adjust these proportions so I will go for face select here, alt click the loop, press S then shift Z to lock it on X and Y axis and let's make it a little bit thinner like that. Okay this might work so let's move on from the lamp uh, maybe this can be a little bit taller so something like that and let's create a picture frame so shift right click here and let's press shift a and let's add a plane now i will tab into the edit mode press r then y and 90 to rotate this 90 degrees so we can just press n for a side panel tab out and in the dimensions menu we'll enter 5 for y and 3 for z and now let's press ctrl a and apply the scale that's really important to do here and now you can see the scale is 1 and we have the desired proportions. Now we can tap back in and scale this 
like that. Maybe we can leave it a little bit larger. This is really stylized type of room. So yeah, something like this. And now let's press I to inset, just like that. And I'll press P and enter to separate this into a separate object. Now let's press A to select all. And now I will do similar thing as with the floor. So let's go for edge select by pressing 2 and select all of these edges. You can use Ctrl Alt click that will select all of these in a loop. And I'll press V to rip them apart like that. Now I'll press A to select all, E to extrude, just like this. Tab out and we can transfer the bevel modifier from the floor. So select the floor by holding Shift and let's transfer this modifier here. And we can adjust the amount so it's not that strong maybe and we can also enable auto smooth go all the way to 180 degrees right click and shade smooth so this will be the picture frame now let's select the object in the middle that's the one we separated before tap into the edit mode press a to select all and g then x to move it slightly forward like that and now to add a little bit of detail um, we can tab out select the frame and with the edge select active we can select this edge hold shift s and snap cursor to select it now tab out press shift a and let's add a plane now tap into the edit mode r then y and 90 degrees like that now let's press g then z and one and confirm so we just move this one meter up because as we know this is two meters wide and high and let me hit n to hide the side panel and now let's select this edge right here and let's press m and merge at center so we have now triangle let's go for a vertex select by pressing one select the top vert press g then z and move this down like this and now let's press ctrl shift b and bevel it like that you can increase the number of segments as you wish but i think like three should be enough now let's go back to the edge select by pressing two select this edge at the bottom and press x and delete edges and now same as before i will tab out right click convert to curve and add some depth to this right click shade smooth and now we can tab in press g then z and move it slightly down so the endpoints are not visible there and now let's select this control point right here hold shift s and cursor to select it now tab out let's press shift a and we'll add a circle now 12 should be enough again tab into the edit mode let's press s to scale it down let's press r then y and 90 degrees let's confirm press g then x and move it slightly to the front and now let's press e then x and f to fill and again we'll press ctrl b to bevel this slightly and just tab out right click and shade smooth nothing to do here this is so small that we don't need any like refinements or modifiers there and the last thing to do is to select everything here by holding shift with the button as last and let's press ctrl p and parent to object and this way we are able to press r then x and rotate this and tilt on the wall slightly like that and the last thing to model here will be the TV, so shift right click here to place the cursor and let's press shift A and again we'll add a plane, tab into the edit mode and let's press S to scale it down and now S then Y to scale on Y axis, I think something like that should be enough, let's rotate a little bit with the middle mouse button and press G then Z and move this up like this and now press E to extrude. And now again we can hold ctrl alt and select all of these edges around let's press ctrl b to bevel them and increase the number of segments just like that should be enough now tab out and again shift click the floor and we'll transfer some bevel modifier here and now let's select the tv again shade smooth and in the object data properties auto smooth and 180 degrees and now let's press shift a we should still have the cursor there at the bottom let's press shift a and we'll add single vert again now let's look from the side by pressing 3 on an numpad let's zoom in a little bit and make sure you are in the vertex select so let's press 1 and let's hit e then z and move it up and we can slightly move it to the side so press g then y and move it like that so there's a slight angle and let's press 1 for a front view and we can press G then X and do same angle here. Now let's go to the top view by pressing 7 on the numpad and we can enable X-ray. And now let's press A to select all and press G and move it to the corner somewhere here. And you can see origin point stays there. So now we are able to tab out, right click, convert to curve and additionally go to the modifiers tab and let's add mirror modifier and enable Y as well so we have 
four curves there let's go back to the curve settings and increase the depth like this now to about select the top control point and by holding alt s we can scale it up now let's toggle the x-ray again and here you can see it's a weird angle so we can press e then z and extrude this down a little bit Okay, now tab out and just right click and shade smooth. Um, nothing much to see here, so we won't be adding any refinements. Now select the TV, tap into the edit mode. Let's go for face select by pressing 3 and select this face on top. Hold Shift S and snap cursor to select it. Now tab out and let's press Shift A and we'll add yet another round cube. And the preset settings stay the same, so we can now tab in and scale it down like that. Let's look from the side here and again toggle the X-ray. Let's go for vertex select by pressing 1 and select these vertices, press X and delete them. Um, now we can alt click the bottom loop and press F to fill and control B to bevel, but I think something like two segments should be enough. Now tab out, right click and shade smooth. So we now have something like this here in place, so let's press shift A and we'll add yet another single vert. Let's look from the side by pressing 3 and again I will enable X-ray. And with the vertex select active, let's press G and move it to the side like this and press E to extrude. And you might see where this is going, so tab out, right click and convert to curve. Now I will increase the depth slightly and now tab in, select this control point and press Alt S to increase the individual radius for that vertex and create something like that. Now tab out, right click and shade smooth. And of course, we'll go ahead and add mirror modifier and let's enable Y axis and disable X axis. And now the one last thing I want to do here is to tab into the edit mode, select this control point, shift S and snap cursor to select it. Now tab out and again, another round cube and just tab in, make it smaller, tab out, right click and shade smooth. Let's disable the X-ray and to transfer it to the other side we can use mirror modifier again. But this time we'll need something as a mirror object so let's click the eyedropper tool and pick something like that and enable Y axis disable X. And now same as before I will just select everything here with the TV as last press Ctrl P and parent to object so now we are able to scale rotate manipulate this um, as we want. and. You can see the origin point stayed at the bottom there. That's why I moved everything in the edit mode after creating the plane. So now I'm able to scale this down according to the floor position. And the only thing left is basically to adjust the scale, the proportions um, of everything, maybe make the sofa a little bit larger, um, whatever you want basically um, to make this look a little bit better. Um, and I will just select all of these objects and parent them to the lamp so I can move that one as well. Okay and let's hold shift s and snap cursor to world origin and we'll add a background and a camera. So for the camera I will be using the isocam add-on, I will press n for side panel and I have the add-on right here. If you don't have it installed just look in the description there's a link to download and the guide to install. Just go into the preferences add-ons and load the zip you will download and then activate it and you should see these options right here and I will use true isocam which is 4 to 3 ratio and now let's go to the output settings and change this to something like 1600 to 1200 so we have 4 to 3 ratio and now press G then Z and move this up like this and I will just eyeball it here and let's go to the camera properties and change the orthographic scale to something like 17 or maybe even higher maybe something like 19. Okay, and I can see I have more space up here, so press G then Z and move the camera down tiny bit and I'll press Shift A and let's add a plane and just scale it up, that'll be our background. So that's the scene and now we'll just add some materials and some render settings. So before we proceed with the materials, um, let's go to the render settings and for the EV I use this uh, mostly as a preview engine and then I will render out in the cycles. So I will enable ambient occlusion, bloom and screen space reflections so it all looks a little bit nicer in the material preview and then I will switch to the cycles here, enable GPU and some denoising. For the performance if you're using GPU, I found out that the smaller size of the tile um, works a little bit faster and then I will reduce the samples to something like 512 for now. And these are the render settings basically and one last thing I will do is press Ctrl B and limit our render view only 
to the bounds of the camera. So now if you do a render preview, this is the cycles and this is the material preview, um, basically the EV engine. So now let's go to the material tab and let's select the room. And there's already a default material and we can basically leave it like this for the walls. So let's tab into the edit mode and select these faces right here. Uh, make sure you're in the face select and let's create a new material slot, new material there. And this will be the pink material for the walls, something like this and click assign and now tab out and you should have something like this here. If you have some issues um, with the Boolean modifier in combination with multiple material slots, um, that it breaks your model a little bit, just tab in and out a few times and it should be solved. Sometimes it happens for me with the latest version. Um, so let's move on and let's select the floor. There's already material because that was um, separated from the original object. So let's remove it and create a new one. And let's pick some like dark green color like this, almost blue basically. And let's make it a little bit darker like that. And for the sofa, I think this should be orange. So let's pick something like that. And one more thing, we need to increase the roughness for all of these. Um, I don't want um, like very strong reflections in place. And now let's select the TV. Let's create a new material and let's pick some like violet material. And again, we'll increase the roughness all the way. And now we can select all of these sofa objects um, with cushions as last. Press Ctrl L and link materials that will transfer them there. Let's select the shade that should be orange as well. Now on the ring two, um, I suspect, and let's increase the depth here. And this part at the top should be like a light blue color. I suppose so something like this here. And again, we'll increase the roughness and we'll reuse the color here as well. And the lamp stand should be violet, I suppose. And let's create a new material here that should be black or dark, almost black. And the antennas on top should be like a gray color. And again, don't forget to increase roughness. Same with the black color. Okay, and let me make this gray as well. And here also, and now the carpet, um, I will tap into the edit mode. And now let's click away to the select all and press L hovering over um, this part here. And let's assign a new material. So first one should be the pink material. And now let's create a new material slot. And I will deselect again, hover, press L here and assign. And this one should be the purple. Now the select, let's press L again, create the new material slot and let's pick the blue material, click assign and the central one should be orange. Okay, now for the frame, for the wooden frame, I will create a new material and let's make color like this. Let's select the string here and let's use the black color and here we can use, for example, the violet. Okay, and one last thing, I want the picture here. And as you maybe already know, Simpsons have this beautiful boat picture hanging over their sofa. And I recreated that very quickly in Figma. Um, you can download that as well in the description. So let's create a new material there. And instead of a color, we'll click this thingy here and plug in image texture and click open and just link that texture right there. Um, and you might see it rotated this way, so tab in press A to select all and U and the unwrap. Um, and this is still upside down. So we'll need to go to the UV editing, press A to select all here and press R and 180 degrees to rotate. And this ratio is a little bit off. So what you can do is to select these top vertices in the UV editor, press G, then Y and move this up. And now in the material preview, you should see this working correctly. So let's go back to the layout view. And basically that's it for the materials. Um, one last thing, we have the background. So let's create a new material for background. And I want to pick this light blue color from the picture. I think this will look great and increase the roughness there as well. And we can increase the roughness for the picture material also and for the wooden material. Okay, um, let's see how it looks rendered. Um, quite nice, so now we only need some light. Let's press Shift A and I will add an area light. Press G then Z and move it up. And now let's switch from square to disk. 
and increase the size to something larger like 8 meters, maybe not so much. I want really soft shadows there and let's increase the power to something like 500. And now we can press G then Z, move this up and I want to move the light where it starts to touch the top of the walls and now let's reduce the size and place it somewhere here. I really like that and maybe this needs to be stronger like 750. Okay, now let's go for a top view by pressing 7 and let's press Shift D to duplicate this towards the back. Let's look from the camera by pressing 0 on an numpad G then Z and move this down so we have some backlight there and we can make this um, a little bit stronger, something like 1500 but maybe a little bit smaller. Okay, and now I can see this color here is a little bit too desaturated so let's increase the lightness and let's give it some more blue tone like that and finally to blend it all we can go to the world settings and increase the overall lightness of the world and change the color you will see how the shadows fill um, with the color you choose um, you can go a little bit violet or maybe just stay in the blue hues um, whatever works for you I think I will pick something like this and then just play with the lightness okay something like this and now let's go to the render settings and in the color management section we can increase the exposure a little bit and change the contrast look to something like a medium high maybe reduce that exposure and maybe this is too strong so something like 500 for the light let's reduce the size tiny bit and let's play with the placement and of course you can press g then shift z to move this around a little bit so it's not directly top down so maybe this will work a little bit better and then we can give it some more exposure okay and there are some small details you can do um, very quickly for example since we already have a boolean modifier here you can go into the edit mode and just duplicate these two walls right click to release and p and enter to separate now we can tab out select that new object tab in and go for edge select by pressing 2 select these two edges press g then z and move it down like this now select all by pressing a alt e and extrude along normals let's press s for even scaling and let's create something like that here and you will see the boolean modifier so no need to cut away anything and you have some nice additional detail um, in your work so you can for example go into the edit mode again select everything press shift d z and move it up here and use that vertex snapping by holding control to have the similar thing on top and now i will just go to the side view enable x-ray and bring this up a little bit okay so that's the simpsons living room for you um i really hope you enjoyed this one if you did please leave a like hit that thumbs up and Again, if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more, please hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.